If you guys are on the market for some new sneaker cleaner, uh, I personally am sponsored by Rejuvenator, and it is uh, a company that I've been sponsored by for a while now, and one that I've stuck with because I really do believe in its product. And for those people that are wondering, I do get a 10% off coupon code for you guys that will be linked in the description of the video. Go feel free to check it out. There is free shipping in the US as well. If you guys haven't used the signature kit, it's really, really amazing. You get the Rejuvenator sneaker cleaning solution. You also get some shoe trees and a laundry bag. And basically they have a patent on this laundry system and it works for a reason. Most of the sneakers that are gonna be in this countdown are gonna be perfect for this type of sneaker cleaner. You just scrub down your shoes with water and then one of the three brushes provided then you will throw them in the laundry bag and then give it a deep clean in the wash because honestly you can get the outside exterior of the shoe clean but that inside grime can be nasty. So obviously laundry bag with the shoe trees help it hold the form. It's a really great product and honestly one that could be a really nice premium gift uh, for your friends and family out there that like sneakers as well. Again, my code in the description of the video for 10% off of your order. All right, so sometimes I get some harebrained ideas and this is one though that I wanted to bring to fruition. I have a bunch of different sneakers out here that I've tried and done reviews on for the most part on this channel and basically I wanted to rank them based on foam density from the softest to the firmest keeping in mind that most of these sneakers are made for running or for comfort and I basically uh, I just wanted to see if my thoughts on the overall comfort of them matched what the actuality of the, the foam density would be. Now keep in mind the softest doesn't necessarily mean it's more responsive or less responsive than some of the other uh, models out here. Some foams are actually made to just absorb some foams are made to be responsive and bounce back. So some of them might have more squish but less uh, return. Some of them may be very, very squishy and then have a lot of spring back as well. They all kind of offer some sort of different things. But so to test the foam density, I have this little durometer or durometer. And basically you just put the little end in on the foam and try to get an even reading. It says that you should probably test like three, at least three times and then give it an average of uh, the, uh, the foam test. But basically, like a Nike Dunk is around 76, and I'm assuming the Nike Air Jordan 1 is, yeah, about 74, 76 as well. So uh, those ones are about 76, just to give you an idea uh, from what a firm pair of sneakers would be. This was quite the feat to get all these out here and try to test them with uh, the Durometer. One thing that I will mention though is it was really hard to find nice flat surfaces in all of the sneakers. Some of them don't have a perfectly flat surface, so some of the metrics may be skewed a little bit. Uh, so keep that in mind. I tried to get the best readings that I could uh, though for your guys' sake and for mine. So first we'll start off with the Adidas Boost technology because this is the one that kind of started the landscape change of all of the different comfort sneakers that um, I guess companies were after. They really wanted to have something that had kind of a responsive, soft, squishy, light midsole sort of thing. And a lot of the major companies that you can see out here have achieved that in some way, shape, or form. Some of them are lighter, some of them are more responsive, and some of them are softer. Uh, but the Adidas Boost technology is the one that started it all. This one had the, the density of between about a 25 and a 28. And I did check the outsole as well. It's about a 65. And compare that to the Air Jordan 1. This is obviously much, much softer than an Air Jordan 1. So uh, yeah, it's it's definitely worth noting that this is what like the epitome of a comfort sneaker would be because of the, the Boost technology now. Now, oddly enough, this was one of the softer ones on the list. There's some of them that are firmer, but actually feel a lot softer on foot, which is an interesting take. And I think it's probably just the way that the foams are comprised. Also the Adidas NMDs, I wanted to try them because they do feel a little bit softer actually when you squish them, but this one's about a 22 to a 28. And then the OG Pure Boost felt like about a 26. Uh, and these ones are about eight ounces. Also something to note for the weight, the Jordan 1 is about 15.5 ounces. The Ultra Boost 21 is about 13.4 ounces. So these are the two baselines and we're gonna go ahead and get into all of the rest. So it's gonna go like this, softest, and then to the firmest back here. So this one's obviously one of the firmest that's gonna go in the back. The Ultra Boost is actually a pretty soft one. We're gonna go right here. So next up we have the Adidas Light Strike technology. We have the regular Light Strike as well as the Light Strike Pro. The regular Light Strike was about a 35 to 40 density. And this one weighs about 8.4 ounces. So very light, but a little bit more firm on feet than the Boost material is. The Light Strike Pro was a little bit softer, about 29 to 32. And this one weighs about 7.9 ounces, which is very light. The next one we have, it's not really even a cushion technology that is one that we should have out here, but I wanted to include it anyway. The, the materials on here is actually really hard, but if you squeeze them together because of the lattice design, it actually has some give to it. And when you step in it, you definitely can feel some give because of the, the overall design of the structure. But the material itself is very, very hard. 74, 76, somewhere in between there. Makes it harder than the Air Jordan 1s actually. 
And these weigh about 12 ounces. So we're gonna put these right here. And to the opposite extreme, we have the Adidas Cloud Foam Technology. This is on the Adilet slides, which are really, really affordable. They come in around 20 to $80, but $20 primarily for like this pair right here. And this is the softest thing out here by far, but of course it's not a sneaker, it's just the uh, Cloud Foam. It's like basically an insole softness. And this is about a 12 to 15, 6.5 ounces. So very, very soft on the softest side of the spectrum. Next, we have Adidas Adiprene, which is actually a little bit firmer than some of the other ones that we just talked about. 46 roughly for this one. And this is the Ozelio model. This is a $100 shoe, really great baseline model, in my opinion, kind of that Yeezy vibe. This one weighs in at 11.2 ounces. So a little firmer, we'll go down on this end. Now I know I don't have Adidas Bounce in the mix here. I don't have any Bounce products easily accessible. I can't find the boxes of where my products are. I do still have some, I just can't find them for this video, unfortunately. I apologize for that. Uh, but we do have some Nikes coming up next. We have uh, the Alpha Fly, which this is a beast of a shoe featuring full length Zoom X, as well as the Nike React in the Infinity React uh, 2s. We also have Kushlon material in this crazy hodgepodge shoe that I made right here, and then also the Invincible Run. So, starting this off, the Zoom Alpha Fly, this is actually between like roughly a 30 and 37. It's kind of a higher variance, but honestly, because of all the angles, it was really hard to get a good measurement. And they weigh 8.4 ounces. This is one that I thought would have been definitely softer. Uh, to the touch, but now that I touch it and squeeze on the shoe, it actually isn't that incredibly soft. But when you step in the shoe, that's when the magic happens. It compresses further than anything out here probably. Just very, very soft, squishy, automatic compression, and then bounce back. It does have a lot of responsiveness as well. It just goes to show that the softest density doesn't mean uh, that it doesn't have any squish or uh, give and stuff. And Zoom X is a prime example of that. One of the most squishy technologies and lightweight technologies that Nike's created and really, really amazingly good stuff. Uh, so that one is around right here. Also the Invincible Run had the same squish to it, about 30 to 35, which is interesting because in the hand it does feel pretty squishy, more squishy than the Alpha Fly, but uh, the durometer told me that's what it says. So, and these are actually like 10.4 ounces or so, which is a little bit heavier than this shoe. The Nike React technology, which is traditionally felt firmer to me than the Zoom X, which is interesting. Uh, this one actually runs at about 32 to 34, and this one has a pretty firm outsole, just so you know, the outsole is about a 74. I'm gonna put this one next to the Zoom X, but it's interesting that it's almost as squishy as the Zoom X, if not a little bit more. And then the last one is the Kushlon, and this one's the hard one to get a reading too. Like in hand, you can squish it, it feels squishy, but from the durometer, it says it's roughly a 33 to 40, so definitely a higher range, and 14.4 ounces for this crazy monstrosity that I created right here. It is kind of nuts because if you squish these two, like the React and the Kushlon side by side, they do feel very similar. But I do believe that the React is a little bit lighter. Because of the range, I'm putting that one on the end. Next up, we have some New Balance because this is the fun part. I really wanted to see it where these lined up on the spectrum. My feet have told me these things are both amazing. We have Fresh Foam and we have the Fuel Cell technology. And the Fresh Foam X from the 1080 V11 is roughly around a 31 and it's 9.7 ounces. So this one, in my opinion, is gonna fall in line right about here. But then we have the Fresh Foam Rove model as well. And I haven't showed you guys this one, but I did get a pair of these just to try them out. This features the regular Fresh Foam, not the Fresh Foam X. This one's about a 32 to 35 and roughly 8.6 ounces. So I'm gonna put this one kind of in between here as well. And then we have the Fuel Cell Rebel V2, which features that crazy, soft, squishy uh, fuel cell. And this one lands between a 20 and 22, which is the softest out of all of these so far. 7.1 ounces for this model as well. I'm telling you guys, best in class for $130 price point. Definitely some crazy, soft, squishy feel here, but it's also really responsive. So you get a lot of spring back when you're walking or running in these shoes, and they're also lightweight. It's really rare to get like all of the elements in one. Uh, it's a really, really good shoe. So th this one comes right down here. And then just to test the consistency of the fuel cell, I wanted to give it a try against the RC Elite V2. And the fuel cell ran a little bit firmer actually in this one, about a 23. But to be fair, again, look at the sculpture of the midsole. It's really hard to get a perfect reading on this one because of all the little bumps. This one actually is 7.9 ounces versus the 7.1 of the uh, the Rebel. But this one goes right in next to this one. So next up, we have four more comfort sneakers from a bunch of different brands that have a lot of really good technology, and all these are pretty much neck and neck. We have the Saucony Endorphin Speed, which is a really, really light shoe. This one's 7.9 ounces, and it plays around a 28 to 32. Great pair of sneakers, though. I definitely need to try the Shift out from a casual. Have you tried the Shift? Drop a comment and let me know because this has a speed roll in it. I don't love the speed roll part of it, but these are amazingly good on feet. Oddly enough, these are gonna go right next to the Ultra Boost, which they do feel very, very similar. Next, we have that Puma Nitro Deviate, which again is a really surprisingly good technology on feet. 
This one does mimic the Pegasus Turbo 2 quite a bit though, but that's a good thing to mimic because that shoe is really good as well. Minus this big plastic plate that gouged my ankle a couple of times. These things are pretty incredible on feet as well. 28 to 31 and these weigh 9.1 ounces. So these ones are gonna go right here as well. Next, we're gonna go with the Brooks that I just recently reviewed. This pair of sneakers is nuts, man. Uh, the DNA Loft V3 on these are really, really soft. And look at this stack on this thing, it's just massive. These weigh 9.1 ounces, so they are a little bit heavier, obviously because they have a lot more cushioning here. And they ran in between the 30 and 32 range as well. So they're all kind of falling in that 28 to 33 range, uh, like right around here. Next up, we have the Hoka Clifton 8, which this one was about a 31 to 33 as well, and 9.3 ounces. Another hard one to measure because of all the angles of the midsole, but roughly around that 31 to 33. Next up, we have the Tree Dashers from Allbirds. This is actually a really comfortable pair of sneakers as well, one that I've mentioned in the past. This one weighs about 10.6 ounces, and the firmness comes in around a 32 to 35. The Crocs Classic Clog. This one features the Crocs Lite technology, which is their patented technology with that iconic Crocs Comfort. This one runs at about 34 to 38 and weighs 8.2 ounces. And we have the last three that I wanted to mention here. The Mizuno Energy, which is a really weird, crazy looking shoe. The craziest on the list here. Roughly around a 35 to 39, but I'm pretty sure the inside of this has that carrier foam, which is a little bit softer. But calling it out as I see it, 35, 39, 13.6 ounces. This is the heavy beastie guy right here. Next one is a new one from APL, which features this new midsole that they have, uh, which is nuts. It's actually pretty good. This one runs around a 36 to 39. So it is a little bit firmer than some of the rest out here, but you can actually feel the squish on feet pretty good as well. So it's under a 40, but uh, all in all, this thing's actually pretty nice. These are about 9.9 .9 ounces. And the last one, I finally dug this up. This is the Hyperburst from Skechers. This is a really ugly looking shoe, but the midsole technology on these are actually pretty impressive. Uh, this one runs about a 27 to 33. Uh, and weighs nine ounces. So actually pretty soft and squishy, 27 to 33. 27 on the lower end means this one falls kind of in line right about here. So that's kind of the look at it from the softest here all the way down and then coming back around here to the firmest. So softest and firmest goes to Adidas. The softest sneakers though actually goes to the New Balance Fuel Cell, which is consistent with what I've been saying about these shoes. They're just insanely soft and squishy. One of the surprising details to me is that Adidas Boost was actually on the lower end of all of the materials. I thought this one would have been uh, higher than the Nike React for sure, but it just goes to show you if it's a softer density, doesn't mean that it's actually softer feeling on feet. And it also doesn't mean that it's more responsive or provides more cushioning because some of these other models out here feel like they have a lot more uh, give when you step in them. And then some of them feel like they're really, really responsive. The other one that surprised me a lot is the Nike Zoom X. I thought it was softer in hand than it was, but if I'm thinking about it, it really isn't that soft in hand. It's just soft on feet. So it goes to show you, you just can't judge a book by its cover. Just cause it's firmer on the outside does not mean it's not soft and squishy uh, on the inside. Uh, we're talking about sneak. We're talking about sneakers here still. But as you can see here, most of the competition lies around that 28 to 35 range, and all of that from here to here is like really good. Like all of these feel really crazy soft on feet. So really, it just goes to show you again. A lot of times, it just depends on what the company's trying to do to create the product. Like this doesn't feel like a really responsive pair of sneakers, but the Clifton material that they use for this midsole definitely feels like some squish when you're stepping. The same thing as the Fresh Foam X. When you're stepping, it doesn't give you the most amount of bounce back, but it does provide like a really nice cushion for you for impact protection and stuff like that. And I'm talking from a running perspective, but from a casual perspective, when you're walking around, it gives you like that impact protection as well. Anyways, what do you guys think? What are some other sneaker cushioning technologies that you've tried that you think are really, really soft? on feet or feel really comfy or uh, responsive or lightweight, drop some comments and let other people know, let myself know. And cause I know I reviewed a lot of shoes out here, but obviously I didn't get all of them. Um, I don't have all the shoes out there. Like the Peak Tai Chi is one. I think Peak has another new one that I need to give a try. Reebok Float Ride I think is another one. There's a couple other ones that I just didn't try. Uh, so I apologize I didn't get all of them. But hopefully you guys found the video informative. And if you guys did, please drop a like on the video. Share it with somebody interested in Comfort Sneakers as well. And uh, much appreciated if you guys do that. Again, if you guys want to buy any of the technologies that I showed you guys in this video, check the link in the description. But have a good day and hopefully we'll see you guys back here for some more videos. All right, peace guys.